Hello YouTube, today I am wearing what I consider to be the acronym uniform consisting of the J1A GT, the P30A DS and the Nike Vapormax Mach 2s. Um, this will be the first in a trilogy of videos about these three pieces. So first let me say a little bit about why I consider this to be the acronym uniform. First of all the jacket, it's the first one so therefore the precursor to all the other jackets that were made after this. Uh, we are at the J89 right now, I believe. Also, the J1 has had so many iterations that I consider it to be the, the acronym jacket uh, because it keeps being updated, perfected, uh, that I think we might call it the acronym flagship piece. So then we have the P30s which is probably a bit more likely to be a point of discussion among fans because the P10s are also very popular and therefore I think they could also be considered a uniform piece. Still, I choose the P30s, which is of course partly a matter of taste. I, I just like these better. I actually don't even like P10s at all because I don't really like this skinny silhouette. I don't think it fits this style very well actually but even more so because we know that Aerolson's motivation and inspiration to make clothes from a very early age comes from wearing his karate outfit and I think the P30s design wise have much more of a link towards that angle. I mean these pants are so big and wide these, these really feel like they are made to throw kicks in as opposed to the P10s which are basically just motocross pants. Also, these are featured in many an acronym video, including the most recent Sky Any Color campaign. And if you look at Erlson's public appearances, 99% chance that he's wearing these pants himself. So I think we can guess that these are his personal favorite pants also. And then with these crepes, kind of the same story as with the pants. They are featured in many an acronym video, as well as on Erlson's own feet at public appearances. Personally, I think these are the most bold and futuristic looking pair of acronym shoes uh, they have produced. And they are just my personal favorite shoes ever. But why, I will tell you in the video about the shoes. And so now, because this is the first one, I'm going to talk about this jacket. By popular demand, I am finally here with the review of the J1A GT. 2.2 in this case. This has been requested quite a lot, a video about this jacket. I do understand it's quite an iconic jacket. I have had it now for almost a year. I bought it last year in February when it was restocked on the acronym Mother's site. It was actually my first real acronym purchase as in I already bought some other stuff before this that had acronym on it, but those were the Nike sneakers or sweaters like this, which are all collabs with other brands. So that's not really mainline acronym, so to speak. I had been looking at a lot of acronym pieces already and was in doubt like probably many of you still are about spending so much money on a piece of clothing. But then when this iteration of the jacket was released, I kind of immediately dove on it because I, I just knew I, I wanted to have this jacket for so long because it's not always available. So let me dive into the history a little bit of this jacket. This is the very first design, the jacket design acronym did. That's why it's called the J1. So the very first iteration of the jacket came out in 2001 in a package, which is now very infamous among fans, called the Kit One. It contained the J1 jacket, obviously, um, in, a wide, in a wide variety, also known as the Snow Ops. With it was the 3A1 messenger bag that was designed to be integrated with this jacket through Interops, which Harrelson has shown in many a video. I've only seen the Kit One jacket and maybe a handful of fit picks, so I think it's quite rare. Um, I mean, it's also a 19-year-old jacket. 
I read in an article by Hypebeast that there were 120 produced. So I guess most people who have the jacket uh, don't take pictures of themselves and post them on Instagram. The last iteration of this jacket was also a white version, the J1E that came out last summer, which is an even more exclusive jacket because only 40 of them were produced, according to an interview with Arelson. And it wasn't even released to the public, but only available on the subnet, which is a backdoor site of acronym for acronym superfans, which you can only get access to if you are um, invited by Earlson himself. Hold up. What I'm saying is not even correct. The J1B, which came out this autumn, is the last iteration of the J1. Um, I should have known this because I even ordered one, so that's kind of dumb. That came out in three different colors. Also white, RAF green, which I ordered, and a black version. Also, it was released in a very small quantity on the mother's side itself in a multicolor version, which sold out in like seconds. But back to this jacket, this is the J1A GT 2.2, which as I said before, came out last year, uh, in February. I think I read somewhere it was the 16th or 17th iteration of the jacket. I don't know if this is true. I I tried to find the information on this and I couldn't find it anymore, but I, I remember something, reading something like that. This was the first iteration that was made in China. This caused quite an uproar uh, when it came out because many fans had a lot to say about this. I'm not going to get into the details about that because I don't really care about it. If it's a good jacket, it's a good jacket and I don't really care where it's made. I do, however, care how it's made and knowing the ethics of Acronym and Arelson and the vision behind their brand, I think I can trust that even though it's made in the country, China, it's made under different circumstances than the stuff that is made in China just for the cheap labor or that has a label of low quality on it. I do have to say, however, that the loop in the neck where the jacket sling is attached to broke in like two months after I received this jacket, but I mailed acronym about it and they apologized for the poor quality. And then I sent it to them to have it fixed and, and it's fixed now. It's great. So if that has anything to do with it, I can't really say. All right. So moving on to the features, um, Let's start with the most obvious one, which is the huge flag pocket that is on the front. It's huge, it's big, it's nice, I love it. Usually I put the hood in there. So it's actually a double pocket. It opens on the top with a zipper, a YKK uh, water resistant reverse coil uh, zipper, which is the same zipper that's also on these two chest pockets the lower pockets and the gravity pockets I will uh, touch on later on. So there's a lot of room in here. I usually keep my phone in there, but my phone is recording right now. It's just really great that it's super conveniently placed for a right-handed person, I guess, to just drop something in while you're doing things. If there's something in your hand if you, and you have to do something, you can just drop it in there because it's, it's quite deep. And as you can see, because the zipper opening doesn't open the entire depth of the pocket, you can really just chuck anything in there without having to be afraid that something will fall out, uh, even if you bend over, because probably it will get caught on, on the rest of the pocket. So that's, that, that's really something I, I like a lot. So yeah, that's a pocket I use all the time. I throw my phone in there, I throw my gloves in there, keys, headphones, anything you can just like drop in there and, and we'll just stay in there. It's a really, really great pocket and which I think really defines this jacket. Also the look of it because it's very visible. Yeah. And because I love this pocket so much, it's already something that I am afraid I will be missing in the J1B even though I haven't even received the jacket yet. 
but we'll see. Then, as I said, it's actually a double pocket, so on the side, it has a mezzanine pocket, which means that that is a pocket that is open and cannot be closed but has the same space as the inside. So that can also fit the hood. And the hood is so big that if you put the hood in the mezzanine pocket, it will be so secure that the chance of that falling out are just almost non-existent. The mezzanine pocket also has a small hole on the bottom, which I think is to let water out or dirt. I don't really know exactly. But I've also seen people put a pen through it like so. So I don't, I guess that's, uh, that's a way to use it too. I don't know what the exact function is it is meant for, but maybe that doesn't really matter. I think the fact that it can have different functions is kind of cool. Then there are the chest pockets. As I said before, with the same reverse coil zippers. They look like two, but there are actually three pockets. The right one is a big pocket covering the entire right side of the chest, which is great. I personally use it to keep my keys because it's very close to the body. Also a pocket because it's very flat and quite deep that I dare drop something in there and not be afraid that it falls out even if I keep the zipper open. So then on the left side, the pocket is actually divided into two parts. So this part where the flag pocket covers it is not a pocket on the back. So the little triangle over here is called the lipstick pocket, suggesting that you should keep lipstick in there. Now I did try to keep some lip balm in there. And I have to say that I found it particularly uncomfortable carrying this here. First of all, you can really like see it poking through and I just really, really feel it in your chest. So I don't know. I personally haven't really found use for this pocket. I wouldn't know what I would put in there that is so small. Maybe cash. I guess you can put cash in there. I never have cash on me actually, almost never. So yeah, that's a pocket that I personally do not use at all. The J1B missing the flag pocket will have the entire left pocket usable in the same way as the right pocket is on here. So I'm already thinking that probably I will be using this chest pocket more on the J1B as I am using the flag pocket on the J1A, but we'll see. And so then the rest of this pocket is, um, available for stuff. I have to say that I don't really use this pocket. I think it's quite difficult to reach because you really have to, because it's quite high. This one is reachable more easy because it's, you can put something in the front, but because on this side, this, this part is not usable, um, you really have to bend your arm back to, to reach this. Do I think this is a convenient pocket? Both the chest pockets have two zipper handles, so they can be opened to both sides. You could keep the zippers here in the middle, so you have these two pockets open. Then we have a half hidden pocket on the shoulder, which I think is really cool because, yeah, it just looks cool. I like the half hidden stuff, like on the Shadow Project pieces, you have things that are half hidden, I really like that. At first, I didn't really use it that much, but since I got the 3A MP3 TS uh, wallet for my birthday for my lovely sister, I do because that's where I keep it now. It fits there perfectly. So that's now my, uh, my wallet pocket. That has a different zipper though. Also YKK like all the other zippers, only it's just smaller. What the practical idea is of this shoulder part that covers the pocket. I don't really know. I don't think it really has a function. It's just cool design, I guess. If you do know if this has a function, please let me know because I have no idea. Then we have the two side pockets on the front, which are kind of standard for a jacket, I guess, but still very usable and 
a lot of room in the front, but also in the back. Like there also is on a lot of the Nike Lab ACG uh, pockets. Then of course we've come to the very famous gravity pockets. I don't actually know if this is a invention of Erlson. Uh, I do know that acronym jackets are very well known for having these. Also, it's a feature that he really likes to demonstrate in videos and in presentations he does. So that makes me think that it's kind of his thing, but I don't really know if there have been pockets like these before uh, he did it. Acronym is well known for it anyway. Um, so how this works is that you can put you can open it like this. You can put something in there and then on the inside, um, there's an opening that is closed with a button and that also gives access to the same space. So if for instance, you put something in there and you were to open this, you can make it slide out by making a cool uh, arm move. I've practiced it quite a bit and I have to say it's quite hard to make something come out the way you want. And what I mean by that is actually catching it with your hand and not just slamming it on the floor or it not coming out at all. But I mean, Erlson has been practicing it for like maybe 30 years. So I guess it's, um, it's a skill you have to learn if you want to, because I don't know if I really want to. I personally do use the pockets a lot. I have my public transport card in here, which I use to swipe the, the gates, which is super great and convenient. Kind of like a ski jacket has for the same purpose. So yeah, I like that a lot. In a lot of his demonstrations, Erlson shows that you can use it to put your phone in. I personally have quite a big phone like I think most people have nowadays. So yeah, that's super uncomfortable to have like this big chunky and heavy thing in your underarm pocket. So it was probably more usable like that. At the time it, it was conceived when phones were smaller and less heavy. So even though it has become a bit of a gimmick, I still really like it, I, I, I use it. So I guess that covers the pockets. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pockets on the jacket, which I think is a, quite a good amount of pockets. Then moving on to the non-pocket closings, the zippers, mainly the zippers in the front, consisting of three zippers. We have the top one, which goes from the neck until like the middle. That closes only this top part and the, the lower part of the zipper is loose, which I think is a really cool design feature. And then we have the main zipper, which runs all the way from the bottom to the top and is an escape zip, which means that if you pull it on the top, it just lets you rip open the zipper. Now this is a super cool feature to me. I mean, I use this all the time. Some people consider it a gimmick. Uh, maybe it is but I don't really care. I think it's super cool. I commute a lot. I get into out of trains. And so in the winter, when it's really cold outside, for some reason, they really like to pump the heating in the train. So the difference in temperature is, is crazy. It's really nice to have a type of zipper that when you come out from the cold and get into the train, you can open the jacket really fast. Then we have two buttons, very similar to the buttons on the Shadow Project bomber that I also covered. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out right there. As I said in that video, also a feature that I really love because it's a very fast way to semi-close the jacket when it's quite windy, for instance, but not necessarily that cold that you want to close the jacket entirely. Actually, I use this every morning when I get out of the house in the morning to go to work. I'm usually in a rush because I'm always late. So I'm always running and I'm always forgetting something and I have to run back in and get it and then I'm almost missing my bus. So then I'm also always really hot and it's really great to then not entirely close the jacket but 
have it semi-closed because if I have an open jacket and I'm running and it's windy, then the jacket will be all over the place. But um, this helps it just keep it in place, but still be very open and uh, breathable. Then lastly, there's one more other zipper on the inside, which is also a reverse coil uh, water resistant zipper, which can be used if you have the main zipper closed to either open it from the bottom because the main zipper is not a two-way zipper, but this zipper can also be opened from the top, which kind of makes it like an, an opening uh, to reach like an inner jacket. For instance, if you have the J58, which is obviously really meant to be uh, an insulator to this jacket, then there is a pocket right there, uh, which you could access through this, uh, this hole you can create with this zipper without having to open the rest of the jacket. So that's, uh, that's a really cool feature too. So then if you have this closed, then after that you can close the top zipper to have the entire jacket closed and then it's all closed and windproof. Then on the back we have another zipper, which is called the interops feature. It's meant to integrate the 3A1 sling bag, a feature that Errolson also really loves to demonstrate in videos and which is also very typical for acronym. I personally don't use it because I don't have any sling bags because I don't really like a bag hanging off one of my shoulders. So I wouldn't know how convenient it is. Sometimes if it's hot, I keep it open like this to have more airflow in the jacket. Will I ever use it as interrupts? I don't know. The thing is that I think the idea is that you have the bag under the jacket to keep it dry also. But then again, I think most acronym bags are already waterproof. So personally, I don't really understand why you would have to protect your waterproof bag from the rain. And personally, I don't think it looks super cool to have something under here and it just looks bulky. So even though I think it's a cool idea, I don't think it's that practical. In the neck, there is a zipper called the Aux Zip, which can be used to zip a insulator into the shell, which is pretty cool, but not that special on its own. What is very cool and unique though, is that Aerosyn used the exact same zippers in the Nike Lab ACG line, which makes acronym and Nike Lab ACG cross-brand compatible. Just to be clear, you can zip ACG insulators in acronym shells and vice versa. As far as I know, that's unheard of in fashion. I don't know of any other brands that you can combine like that. I mean, it's like fucking Techwear Legos or some shit. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's amazing. I, I love it. The Storm Hood is removable. It's attached via four buttons. Actually, yesterday I got my J1B in. I record this video over several days, so. Uh, and that comes with two hoods, two, uh, an REF one and a high-vis orange one. So I've been playing around, which are in interchangeable with this one because it's, well, it's kind of the same jacket. Fabric-wise, this iteration is Gore-Tex Pro. The J1 has seen many different fabrics, but well, this one is Gore-Tex Pro which I personally love very much. Uh, I'm a big Gore-Tex fan. I've had quite a few Gore-Tex jackets since I started this hobby and I have to say, I just love it. Some people complain about the fact that it's loud. I guess it is, but I don't really care because I live in a country that is almost always wet. So I know just for sure that this fabric will keep me dry and windproof. And that's really important to me. Uh, above that, it will dry really fast itself. So if you get caught in the rain, if it really, really pours, the outer layer will at some point soak too. I mean, you will remain dry, but the jacket itself will become really wet. But then if you just shake the, the excess water off, and if you just hang it up, it will dry in like minutes it's uh it's amazing rest in peace bob gore so yeah it remains one of my favorite fabrics ever and the pro version which many acronym jackets are made of is also very sturdy i have to say which makes me dare walk in the woods with this uh, 
through branches and bushes and not be afraid that it will scratch or damage or rip or it's really it's, it, it's really tough fabric too because I don't really like the feeling of wearing something that feels fragile. Um, I just like to do my thing and not worry about having to be very careful with my clothes because that to me is not comfort. Comfort for me is not thinking about that. So then there are a few little features left that I would like to mention. First, a feature that I actually just discovered like five minutes ago, which is kind of funny because I'm making this video. I'm looking at every inch of this jacket again for the first time since I, I got it. And I actually never noticed that in the mezzanine pocket, there is a small loop right over here, which you can hang a carabiner off uh, for like your keys and such and I will probably use this now all the time so it, it's also so cool that it's there are so many features on the jacket that even almost a year after buying this I'm still discovering new things about it also there I saw there is a hole here that goes down to here I you can stick a pole through this don't know why you would want to. I guess you can put a pen in here also. Like this, I guess. All right. So another, another pen hole, I guess. Then on the neck, we have two Velcro patches, one for the logo tape or the blank tape the jacket also comes with. Then on the other side, we have the so-called sound force lock, which has two magnets in it. Uh, which you can use to clip a fruit knife to your neck. Now it's obviously to store your ear pods, but well, I personally don't have any loose headphones because I'm afraid I will lose them, which I probably will. So, and if I had them, I would definitely not put them here because then I would lose them for sure. So it's a cool feature. Uh, also stemming from the time where, if you look at the old acronym videos, you see how Erlson puts his wired headphones on there, which I guess is handy. It's a cool gimmick feature, I, I never use it. Then around the elbows, we have two Velcro patches called the sleeve hitch tabs, which are meant to attach your cuff to, like so so that you can roll up your sleeve and attach that. But I don't know if I have very thick underarms. I, I don't think I have, but I, I can't do it. it. just, because the cuffs are so narrow that I just can't get it all the way up there. I mean, I probably could if I force it, but then it would be so crazy uncomfortable that I would never wear it like that. So I think this also stems from the earlier days of acronym where the jackets were a bit more baggy, a bit more still in the Burton snowboard gear, 90s uh, skater wide style. So yeah, that's a feature that's not really usable or really not usable if you ask me. Still, I think design wise, it looks cool. I think it's a, a detail that looks nice on the sleeve making it look less plain. So I'm not mad at all that they, they kept it there. Earlier versions of acronym jackets that have this sleeve hitch tab also uh, featured the old logo on here though, which I think was pretty cool. Uh, I like logos, so um, I think it's too bad that it's, not, that it's not on here anymore. Then last, but definitely not least, the Jacket sling, also a feature uh, which acronym is very well known for. Like other garments by Erlson in the Nike Lab ACG line or uh, Stone Island Shadow Project, as I also mentioned in my Shadow Project uh, Bomber video. This version of the jacket sling though is to me the, the best one of all of them because you can tighten it. I really like the strength, but also the flexibility of this elastic. 
At some point I wanted to try to make more of these and I searched for all the ingredients to to make one of these and I, I got everything but I couldn't actually find this elastic. When I got elastic it was much more uh, loose and not as strong as this one so I'm still looking for this type of elastic. If you know which type this is please let me know in the comments below because I really like to know. So I can also do a video about uh, making this but I don't have the right elastic yet. I can't really say much about it other than it's a great feature. I love it a lot. When it's warmer I use it a lot and I think aesthetically it looks really cool to have the sling on the back. Like ACG slings can only be worn on the inside as can the Shadow Project slings but this sling can either be worn on the inside because you have these loops on the inside also which you can also wear it on the back like this which just instantly gives this jacket the acronym look if you ask me because I, I personally don't know any other brand that has this feature on the jacket. All right so I think I pretty much covered the jacket if if you think I missed something or if you have some other thing to say about the jacket or about this video or if you have an opinion on the acronym uniform uh, concept, do let me know. I would love to read about it. Next up will be the video on P30. So if you don't want to miss that, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications. And I will see you then. Stay safe.